Property falling to 2015 levels. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. I'm Florian Heiser, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my morning stein of coffee, and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au, which is discussing some property falling to prices lower than they were in 2015. Now, I will bring up a interesting chart just showing our property price growth. We can see here in 2015, you know, there's certainly some properties that have hit that level. Now, 2015 was just around the time as well when we had, well, a large number of foreign investors piling into property here in Australia, particularly investment grade units. And also, if we look at this other chart, this is showing unit price growth in Sydney. Population, uh, sorry, property always goes up, isn't consistent. It depends on where you are. If you're one of in, you know, the goat cheese line or the posh suburbs on the water, you're doing a lot better than investment grade out west. And this is a good, a good reference for other cities and locations. So some suburbs are at 2015 levels or below 2015 levels. But aren't we always told that property always goes up, that it's a good investment, that now's the time to get in and pay above reserve? Above reserve, because every every house is a unique, special piece of art that needs to be negotiated or fought for at an auction. It's not at all designed to manipulate buyers. So I, I still don't get it. I guess it's just because in Brisbane here. It really just is. Um, property prices have become cheaper than they were in 2015 in a range of suburbs due to falling demand from investors who were traditionally the main market for the local homes. Well, what does that tell us? What does that tell us? Maybe some of the fears, some of the fears people have over a potential decline in property will be realized. Home buyers in Sydney's new high-rise suburbs can party like it's 2015. Apartment prices have become ch become cheaper than they were five years ago. And you have to remember, everyone, we're just at the beginning of this new recession. It's not even technically, technically, we haven't actually entered recession yet because we haven't measured two quarters of negative growth. Officially, it won't happen until the next GDP data comes out. So we're just at the beginning of the recession. JobKeeper is still in place. The job seeker bonus is still in place. The bank's mortgage holidays are still in place. And we're already starting to see a decline in property values. You still have international tourists, non-existent. You've got migration locked up. International students apparently will be an exemption. That should just tell us how much political power the universities have if they can get around these restrictions or probably the university and the property council. If they can allow that, open up a lot more, everyone. We've all seen what's happened in Melbourne, how there's been a spike of additional cases, but it was all from a security guard at a hotel. It wasn't really from the protest, was it? So what does that tell us? What does that tell us? Suburbs where median prices are cheaper than in 2015 include Northridge, Campsie, Forest Lodge, and a cluster of suburbs around Parramatta, such as Rose Hill, North Parramatta, and Granville. So, median unit prices in these suburbs range from 2 to 18% cheaper than in 2015, real estate data shows. So an 18% hit to your property, just at the beginning of a recession. And you've got to remember, these I mean, these buildings look nice, they're beautiful buildings, you've got amenities there, but you're not special. You're not special. Oh, look, my, I've got this type of window. Oh, you've got that type of window. Oh, you've got that type. They literally are not special. The plans are very, if not exactly the same, very similar. Or they alternate them to kind of create a bit of difference. They make it different on the facade. Stick stuff on here to make it a bit interesting. But they really are just exactly the same. And the thing is, you know, architecturally, I think it looks quite striking. But from an investor perspective, you're competing with everyone else in that building. When you need to sell, there'll be other people selling. When you're renting it out, there'll be other people renting theirs out. It could be cheaper for someone to move inside their own building to get cheaper rent. All, <laughs> all these considerations. Prices fell largely due to oversupply and weakened by demand. 
with the pandemic accelerating a trend of falling activity for investors who have tra traditionally been the main market for units in high density areas. Buyer demand also dropped following much publicized reports of dangerous cracking in the high rise buildings such as Opal Tower in Olympic Park and Mascot Towers in Sydney South. And well, I'm shocked. I'm, I'm shocked when I'm reading articles where people are, uh, you know, there was a guy in another article who was talking about taking advantage of the $25,000 grant. It's like free money and putting down for a $480,000 off the plan apartment. <laughs> Don't go off the plan. Okay, do not buy off the plan. Not in this market. Just wait. There's going to be enough stock on the market. It seems insane. Why would you do that? Particularly with all the issues that have become manifest in construction. You've got Opal. You've got Olympic. You've got Sugar Cube. You've got Zetland. And there's more. That's the ones I remember off the top of my head in Sydney. You've got all the contamination ground issues around Botany Bay. And then when you come into one of these places, you've got your body corporate fees and you've got your little socialist dictatorship where you've got a bunch of idiots on the body corporate you've got to deal with. And that's not even questioning the potential conflict of interest between the, the management company managing the body corporate and the developer. There's risks there for potential conflicts where they don't want to push for defects because that might limit their ability to get future work managing future buildings from developers. It's it's messy. It is messy. And I'm not saying any any type is or any type of building or homes are better, but well, you've got to manage your risk, everyone. You've got to manage your risk. Because taking an eighteen percent hit in five years, and remember you're paying interest, you're paying body corporate, you're paying all these other expenses, that doesn't seem like a smart investment, does it? It doesn't seem like a smart investment. I think a lot of people got suckered into the property well, vortex that is Australia. A different dynamic has played out in the rest of the housing market, where low housing supply and pent-up demand for upsizes has kept prices close to what they were before the pandemic crisis. So it's a different market. People upsizing houses, particularly in Sydney, we're seeing, you know, you want a house. This is like your, your start. You start in one of these. Get, you know, have one pump, one or two kids out, and then you're thinking, oh, we need a bit more room. This is getting annoying. And, well, we've got five children in our house and four adults living in the house and one in a caravan at the back. And, you know, we bought an old, old rundown in Queensland that needs a lot of work, but it's, it's big. It is big. We've got a lot of rooms and it's easy to adapt and adjust. Whereas in one of these things, no chance, no chance. And I think things like that being, having that extra capacity and extra room in these houses is going to be important with a recession coming. Well, if you've got family members, you, it's a lot easier when you can open up to a family member saying, come here, you'll save money on rent. You now you'll save money on food. Put money aside. It's a lot harder to do in a tiny cramped apartment as it is in a big old house. The median price of Sydney houses dropped 0.6% over May. The first fall in a year and remains 20% higher than 2015 CoreLogic data show. There you go. Ross Street sold for 45000 below the 2015 price for over a million bucks. One bedroom unit in North Ride sold for 615. So again, 35000 below. One bedroom unit for 600 grand. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, it's just the location. It just is the location. Realestate.com.au chief economist Nerida Konisby said home seekers who are willing to purchase in high rise suburbs could get good deals and would face little competition from other buyers. The lower prices would be temporary, she said. Cheaper prices are starting to attract first home buyers. Eventually, the oversupply will get absorbed and the market will recover. Well, yeah, of course, but we haven't felt the brunt of the recession yet. We haven't seen people forced to sell yet. We'll have to see. Maybe it'll all get absorbed and then boom, you'll hit. Reality will hit when the mortgage holidays disappear. Median unit prices <clears throat> fell the hardest in North Ridge or North Ride, where a mass new high rise building. <clears throat> I need a shot of coffee, everyone. 
Median unit prices fell the hardest in North Ryde, where a mass of new high-rise buildings were constructed over recent years. The average unit in the suburb cost 805000 in 2015, and it slumped to 735. Well, there you go. It's taken that hit. It's, and we saw from that foreign investment review board, a large portion of that was foreign investment. They've, they've, they've really pumped up property in apartments. And I remember back in the day, we were talking to clients who were trying to you know, get proposals together for projects, and it was completely funded by foreign investment. Some recent sellers who purchased their properties five years, years ago have had to accept prices below what they've paid. A one-bedroom garden apartment on Whiteside Street sold earlier this year for 615.35 below the 2015 price, while another one better on North uh, Network Place sold for 30 below the 2015 price. Prices in the inner west suburb of Forest Lodge were about 16% lower than five years ago. A typical unit in the area currently cost 837,500. In 2015, it was 994,500. Units, units recently sold for forty five to 70000 less than the 2015 price included homes on Cullen Street and Ross Street. CoreLogic Head of Research Tim Lawless said high-rise suburbs were the least diverse housing mix would be the weakest during the pandemic crisis. Units that will be more insulated from price falls have scarcity value. Units in very large buildings don't have that, he said. Exactly. Exactly. You're not competing with anyone. And I'll link to the article in my pinned comments if you want to go through all the suburbs to see what's doing the worst. But an 18% hit, damn. In just five years, everyone. Five years. So we're starting to see here not all property is the same. Not all property will always go up. And the problem with these units is the body corporate fees, the strata fees. And then, you know, if they're, these buildings are still, are still young, what if they are construction issues that manifest? There's a, there's a precedent of that now. There's a precedent of that now, so there's a risk associated with it. I wonder how many people are just getting out of these investments. Well, let me know your thoughts and opinions, everyone. Are you looking to snap up a bargain? Would you buy one of these as a first homeowner? Or would you wait a little bit longer, particularly with the rents coming down too? But remember, property always goes up, apparently. Apparently. As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next episode.